Good morning, guys. This is an early one. Um, I'd like to share some, some information with you about debt. Um, since the 2008 banking crisis, which was fundamentally created by a gambling banking system, which the best analogy I've ever heard is imagine you have the bankers are playing a game of poker and you've got the dealer and you've got five banks playing poker. He said basically what ended up happening was that they were playing a game of poker where everybody's cards were open so they could rig the game so they all had an opportunity to win in, a, in an even fashion. Part of the problem with the 2008 banking crisis um, and the clue was in the title, which is why it became a bit of a political misnomer in one respect. Um, it was created by the subprime mortgage market in America. Now, the clue's in the title there, subprime mortgage market. And basically, you know, there was an element of this that was pinned on Mexican immigrants, which I think is disgusting because it wasn't. You know, basically, American families were able to walk into banks in America, demand 100% mortgages without providing any evidence that they could actually afford these mortgages, which was just ridiculous. But what American banks started to do was to take this high-risk, quite frankly, toxic debt and repackage them into various derivatives. Um, and these high-risk, high-yield debts were then sold on over and over again. Um, a huge part of it was investment banking, there's no doubt about that, and that there was this severe lack of regulation. But fundamentally, the, the, the people that suffered the most were, you know, your average working class Joes, um, who were already struggling to pay their rent, or already struggling to pay their mortgages, already struggling to pay their bills. We've then seen tuition fees for students increasing, we've seen massive cuts through all uh, public services and due to the basic um, mechanics of global economics we've seen the pound in our pockets um, having the ability to, to just not go anywhere near as far as they did 10 years ago. Now that's part of inflation, um, however you know you normally have pay increases um, to, to compensate for, for the way that the inflationary model works. <laughs> I was looking at some statistics recently of debt. Um, I was looking at some horrifying statistics of postgraduate student suicide. Um, I was looking at, uh, uh, this is the one was absolutely shocking, that the, the, the biggest killer for men under the age of 45 is suicide. You know, not cancer, not car accidents, not heart disease, you know, suicide is the thing that is most likely to kill a man under the age of 45. Student suicide, postgraduate student suicide is so unbelievably tragic um, when it comes down to the fact that somebody is willing to take their life because of debt. So I'm going to tell you the truth about debt. The vast majority of Western cultures use a process called uh, fiat currency, which basically means the currency itself is backed by nothing. It has a value because your government say it has a value. Shut up, Benji. Um, so in our, you know, in the UK, for example, we have pound sterling. Um, so a banknote is worth twenty pounds, and you can buy twenty pounds of goods or services, and you know that is twenty pounds because our government says twenty pounds. We used to have what's called a gold standard, where the currency was backed with something. We can go back to the very earliest uh, examples of, 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 of banknotes, which were promissory notes, which were held by gold and silversmiths, which basically was a, a certificate that said you had a pound of sterling silver or X amount of gold, and that you could use these promissory notes to exchange for good services. Um, and these were a very, very early position, uh, early example of, of, of money. Fiat currency system, lots of people think, is, is a relatively new thing, which, again, is, is a fallacy. The earliest example of a fiat currency was... Uh, I think about 400 BC in China, um, and 
the issue with the fiat currency is is that money is almost conjured out of thin air. It doesn't actually exist. It has no actual value, only because we are told it has this intrinsic value. Um, but also, we have what's called fractional reserve banking, which basically means um, the regulations state that a bank only has to retain 10% of fluid assets. So they only have to have 10% of actual cash to cover um, savings, loans, etc. So what this means is um, the vast majority of money is created electronically. Now this is the key part to understanding the truth about debt. Black's Law Dictionary is fundamentally the uh, secret language that um, the wonderful legal profession created many, many years ago to fundamentally confuse and dupe us common folk. Um, I've always kept a copy of um, Black's Law Dictionary. I believe we're on version 7 or 8 now. Um, I may be due an upgrade. Um, but fundamentally, for a loan to be legal between a lender and a debtor, a commodity of equal value has to be exchanged. Now, any additional um, aspects of contract between those two parties can be decided without affecting the legality of the loan, to the best of my knowledge. So, for example, um, the basis of what a legal loan is, is, is that a commodity is transferred between two people and that is to be paid at a future date agreed between lender uh, and the debtor, basically. So, if we work on a fractional reserve banking system under the fiat currency system, 90% of the alleged money in existence doesn't actually exist. <clears throat> it's binary. It's on a screen. It's ones and zeros. It doesn't actually exist. So you go into a bank, and how many times have any of you uh, with a credit card or a bank loan, gone into the bank, um, say you're buying a new car and you're borrowing £5,000, did the bank actually show you that £5,000 and say, here is, here's the £5,000 for your new car? No, they didn't. What they did is they typed away on a computer and electronic money was transferred or actually, more accurately put, was created and then placed within your bank account. Now, on that basis, and on the fact that we have in the UK a fractional reserve banking system, 90% of loans were not completed in accordance with the law. By proxy, that makes them illegal. Now, I'm not saying to you, you shouldn't take responsibility for your debts. If you've borrowed money, um, you should pay it back. What I am saying is if you're in a position where debt is becoming such a significant problem where it is creating stress and affecting your mental health, then please don't. Debt isn't real. It doesn't exist. It's one of the greatest cons of the 20th century. Um, and what I find most tragic, and there's been a few examples not not too far from where I live, where you know postgraduate students felt that there was there was no way out. Um, so how do you tackle it? There's actually some really really good resources out there. One of the best websites by far um, is a website called Get Out of Debt Free Dog. I'll put uh, the link in the description. Um, they have a number of structured letters that you send to your lenders um, and they have a ridiculous success rate because the vast majority of these organisations cannot pro provide the documentation they need to show that the loan was done legally. And once you establish this with them, um, they will, in 95% of cases, wipe out your debt wipe out whatever value is left on the loan and it won't affect your, your credit rating. Um, you know, we don't have debt as prisons anymore. You can't go to prison for debt. Bailiffs in this country have 
in a way created this 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 again this this bullshit world that they have this 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 power. They don't. A bailiff only has the power that you give him. So just don't open the door. Ask for their documentation. Ask for them to provide you with uh, the writ um, that makes recovery of that debt legal on their behalf. I guarantee you in virtually 99.9% .9 of cases they won't have it. They'll have some bullshit paperwork and they will use tactics of intimidation and threat uh, to, uh, to, to, to alleviate you of your goods, which a bailiff has no right to enter your property. They can't break into your house unless you let them in. So once you've let them in once, they can come in at a later date. Just don't let them in the first time. Don't get into an aggressive conversation. Don't get into an aggressive conflict with them. Just don't answer the door. They'll get bored and they will go. Um, like I say, use the, the, the resources at getabdebtfree.org. It's a brilliant, brilliant website. Um, a phenomenal success rate. They have, have recovered millions and millions and millions of pounds worth of debt. Um, but, you know, there's an interesting saying, you know, um, I'm just trying to remember what it is. <clears throat> The only person that a debt matters to is the person that worries about it. So you know what? Just don't worry about it. Cheers.